do you feel as though that there's going to be a sort of movement or trend because of aducanumab or do you feel as though that it's still as, as varied as it is for now? Uh, that's an excellent question, a very important question. So I'm sorry, I'm going to have to break that into constituent details before I give you a summary of answer. One is that I think one of the big takeaways, disappointing takeaways from at a, uh, at a AIC was the Diane uh, study negative results. Mm -hmm. And to me, you know, I think the takeaway from that is that it's very hard to use a clearance based mechanism to treat a pr overproduction based disease. So when you look at the pre mutations, those are overproduction based diseases. Mm -hmm. And so the question obviously is, does removing of the amyloid in a, a clearance may not be enough. So that's, so what I'm saying is that I don't come away saying these approaches are wrong. I'm saying, I don't know that we tested it correctly or uh, in, uh, answered it as well as we could. Uh, but what you will see now is that aducanumab has reignited the field, excited the field. You are now seeing, of course, that there will be something called segmentation where you start to break the disease into constituent parts. You will see, of course, that we can have disease modifying therapies and assuming that, you know, ADU is approved, you could see, an, you know, a BAN 2401 and a gantanerumab falling on the heels of that. You're now seeing the fact that ALZ801 is moving into phase three trials, which is a focus on the APOE4 homozygotes. But now you start also to see breakdown. People are ignoring the fact that Belsamra, which is Cerexavant, got approved this year. You're going to see an approval for uh, Pimavanserin this year. These are improving the quality. One's taking, targeting sleep. One's targeting, um, um, one's targeting the uh, uh, psychotic features of the dementia. And we'll start to see a little bit more. We'll see something from the, uh, the agitation. There's about two or three drugs about to be approved for agitation or being on the short list to be approved for agitation. So what I'm saying is that the, the pharmacological menu of treatment options is growing quickly, suddenly and quickly. Uh, but, you know, the monoclonals will kind of be there to slow the rate of decline. But it doesn't mean that you won't use the other drugs. It just means that you're going to be picking them. I see to me that the evolution of Alzheimer's will be more like HIV, right? So you don't, you choose different drugs a, a, along the way to treat, you know, different phases of the disease. Uh, uh, so, you know, I think AIC just is the big dog and pony show of our, our universe. So you saw a lot of things and I don't know that you can take away one big trend this year. I think the one big trend I took away from AIC in 2019 was that lifestyle targeted approaches handily were beating the drug targeted approaches. That was my takeaway. I'm like, wow, lifestyle, forget, forget drugs. We just go and run. It will be fine. <laughs> but uh, uh, high lifestyle targeted approaches was the takeaway. So I didn't get a single takeaway. I think biomarkers was very exciting this year, but I didn't take a single way takeaway on the therapeutic side. Sorry for the long answer. <laughs>